if uh, anyone uh, learns that you're interested in astronomy uh, these days then uh, people are gonna ask you what about the comet where's the comet how can I see the comet yes and uh, <clears throat> so I was out here on the 19th and tried to image the comet yeah so I did feel like okay well it's it might be difficult in mono and different color filters and etc maybe it's more of a uh, one shot color camera target really uh, but I, I did a try anyway so it was located right here then by the arm of Hercules yeah That will do, that will do, yeah, done, <clears throat> boom, yeah, perfect, polar line, woohoo, okay, so, uh, we have been outside with the rig last night, mainly this morning, and uh, I imaged the comet C-2022 E3, ah. so, that's what I did, I never actually, I imaged comet once, yeah, uh, so we'll see if I can get something working. Otherwise, this will be a first attempt, and then we'll see if I get another shot until the comet is at its closest. Right, so on with duck business. And work business and uh, we're gonna take a look at the results that I had yeah look at that yeah I was pleasantly surprised maybe not the best comet image ever but I was yeah this is taken in with uh, 10 uh, 30 second exposures of each color yeah so basically uh, 10 uh, uh, red 10 green 10 blue yeah and it's not color separating too much yeah you can see the whole green stuff here is a little bit but then you have this on gray almost maybe a little bit purplish uh, tone to the tail here you have this ray coming out of the comet yeah what is that in better images I've seen it looks like this like a twisted um, uh, some stream of, of of gas yeah I mean that is weird it's almost like a could it be like an exhaust um, fumes coming out from the engine of a spaceship lurking inside the comet here yeah with this protective ice and dust layer that evaporates as it gets closer to the Sun that's a very reasonable explanation but if we go back down to earth here um, yeah, so I was I was pleasantly surprised. So today I'll be imaging the Rosette Nebula. Yes. So, and I think I have maybe. Ooh, some six hours something so hopefully I got to like somewhere past 12 o'clock uh, to image maybe two o'clock I'm lucky there's a tree there as well um, and then I think maybe I'll go out and uh, do the uh, comet uh, C-2022 E3 Z F T or something. Yes, so we might do that, like just middle of the evening. Uh, I did that last uh, about a week ago, uh, and it seemed like 30 seconds was a pretty good setup. So I might do that, or I might go for 20 seconds and a couple of more exposures. Yeah, I'm going to do 10, 10 exposures each, which meant that the comment actually it it moved through the frame, even though well since I guided on the stars but not that much so it was okay i think anyway
image wasn't that terrible. So if I go down to 20 seconds, maybe I can do some more exposures and get some noise out of my I may, might do a combination of 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Ah, yes, so this is the first clear night in months, it feels like. Yeah, uh, it's pretty clear, wind free. So yeah, uh, duck business, yeah. So, gonna get the ducks inside. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sean. We are looking here at the next target for a very short time, and it's the Comet C-2022 E3 ZTF. Anyway, so it's just in front of Urza Minor here, yeah, just in front of the legs, so it's very easy to find. Yes, and it's very close to seeing it, so uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty much pointing straight up. It's almost where we are right now. So that is it. Yes, I looked at it in some binoculars yesterday. You can see the the little fussy thing uh, in just uh, naked eye. I just couldn't see it, um, even though it was hardly any moon to talk about. Yeah, so I think yeah, you need to arm yourself with some something to be able to see it. Yeah. Alright, so I think we're done with the flats. Uh, I'm gonna go out and prep the scope for shooting this one again, yeah. Okay, so I'm getting the comet in field of view here. There, perfect, that's where we're going. So I'm gonna start the guiding. I uh, hope I have a guide start to guide on here. Um, yes, we do. The issues with the uh, comet right now. Um, so here's the first image that I took right there, and here's the current image. And now we're actually into uh, so we're like 23 images in now, and the comet is there now. Yeah. So it's moving quite a bit between each frame. <clears throat> yeah, now it's been like 20, as I said, 23 frames between the current and the first one. But still, that means um, we'll have quite a bit of motion between every one compared. So, in this session, I think we have to go for quite short exposures, and I don't think we can do that many. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if there's any reason to get on with doing this many. I mean, maybe I can do like a um, comet. I can't track on the comet, but maybe the, I think there's some like comet stacking method in PixInsight that I could use just to um, get the comet um, uh, correct. But we'll see. Or I can do that manually perhaps. Yeah, that is a large motion. <sighs> We've just finished an evening here. Uh, first on the Rosette Nebula. Guiding wasn't perfect. I don't know, we'll have to take a look at the images. Maybe something went a bit funky there, we'll see. I'll just shot anyway, we'll see. Um, then, this morning, now, just now actually, I found the comet again. Uh, C2022 uh, E3 ZTF. Yeah. And uh, it's moving a lot more now than it did a week ago. So uh, it's, yeah, the apparent motion you can see. I did 30 second frames a week ago, and you can really see the motion of the comet's core between shots if you do 30 seconds. So uh, if you do like, I did five 30 second frames and then another five, and yeah, you it just looks, you can see the motion too much. So I also did a set of 20 second frames and uh, 10 second frames. No, I just did it darks for the 10 second frames as well. And 20. So, uh, we'll see which one turns out best. It's all turned off. I'm just going to pack up and go inside. Alright.
let's take a look at the 10 second exposures here. Yeah. So these are five of each color. So it's 15 images, 10 seconds each. Yeah, look at that. That is quite a motion. So this is like five red, five green, five blue, five red within this area. So it's quite a large area where you would have like color fringing and color and <clears throat> yeah, and elongation. It would be shit, yeah, <clears throat> I thought. So uh, there, there is supposed to be like some good comet stacking um, scripts or functions in Peaks and Sight, but I haven't gone that far down this rabbit hole yet. So I'm I still have to have to uh, practice a bit. But yeah, <clears throat> so I didn't really come through processing that. I did process. I did take one uh, 30 second shot of each color. So I just process that and uh, to see what it looked like and it looked something like this, yeah? <clears throat> so it's processed to bits, noise reduction as hell on it. But yeah, I mean you see it's a green color, yeah. Well let's not zoom in too much on it, yeah. Let's keep the illusion. And there's like a yeah, some kind of uh, thing coming off here if you really want to. Yeah, perhaps ish. So anyway, <coughs> it's a green fuzzy ball. Yeah, that's a uh, job done. <coughs> so why is it like this? Well, if you go into, I found this very illustrating image online, and uh, it just shows you how the comet travels each day uh, across the sky. So my first image was taken here. Yeah, and here we can see the distance traveled each day, and it's not that long. Yeah. So if I do a little exposure here like I did, it's yeah, I could do a couple of uh, frames and <clears throat> they wouldn't um, separate too much. But now I took an image right here, yeah, or here rather. And you can see the distance traveled in 24 hours is maybe like two or three times longer than it was here. Yeah. So at least two times longer. <clears throat> and as we get closer to its closest point around the sun, which is here, you'll see that the distance traveled in one day is a lot longer. Now, I also found a little gif here to illustrate the uh, comet's orbit around the sun. And it's like, as it comes in close, it like, gets like gravitationally pulled towards the sun, and then slingshotted around and out, and then pulled back in again. So the um, angular velocity is a lot higher in here. And the since it's closer to us, the apparent distance travel will be a lot larger since it's closer to us. So it's just yeah, it's moving very fast across the sky, and it was a lot more difficult to. Well, actually, it was just as difficult as I first thought it was. But then I was uh, <clears throat> um, boosted in confidence by my first image, and then I was pulled down to earth again. So <clears throat> that's it. So I think maybe this will be my last image of. Z of C2022 E3, yeah. So I'm just gonna say goodbye to it, I think, maybe. And uh, <coughs> um, to you as well, see you next time, and may the dark side be with you.